statement, but it sure looked like he got outworked. And it looked like he got outworked by a guy who's better on the ground. So now you're going in against arguably a guy who's gone to ADCC, a guy who who routinely works out with with Enzo's crowd. Like, this is the guy. This is literally the submission wrestler. This is the guy. That, uh, I don't know if you saw it this week, but um, <clears throat> Eddie Bravo put out sort of this edict to all of his little 10th planet. Uh, for those of you who don't understand, Eddie Bravo is the fa- grandfather of all no-gi grappling and submission that's out there. He got really upset about uh, Enzo Gracie's group, or I should say the Donner Death Squad, for those that... We're getting really deep. For, there are people who are just, what does this have to do with MMA? Trust me. <laughs> Everybody comes out of Donner Death Squad. Donner Death Squad has Jake Shields. It's where the best of the best are. Donner yeah, Death killer. Squad Murder is drop. arguably the best submission grappler, no gi guys on the planet. Bar none. Yep. So yep. Eddie you know, Bravo Irish puts out an iron. Eddie Bravo's put out an edict that he wants his crowd to be the best and he wants to start beating the Donner Death Squad. The reason I say that, there is one man who's been able to go in and beat Tenth Planet guys, beat Donner Death Squad guys. He shows up time and time. he beats, for God's sakes, Brazilians. It's George Saint Pierre. I yep. don't think anybody's ever argued his grappling ability. I think we argue his finish ability, his striking ability. There's a lot to argue about GSP. I don't think, well, I'd, I, think I, I don't think I'd ever argue his grappling ability. No. I think with GSP, a lot of what happened with him was he became complacent in his ability. He knew that he could always sink that takedown no matter what the situation was. So he was willing to push the pace a little bit and push the envelope on his feet a little bit more. Like in that fight against Hendricks, I mean, I, you know, I, I thought that Hendricks won that fight. I thought he outpointed him. But at any moment, GSP could have sunk that takedown. He, he was getting it any time he wanted at will. And that's against a guy like Johnny Hendricks who's one of the, I mean, best wrestlers in MMA. I mean, so you got a guy like uh, a, a European who g- didn't grow up wrestling, first of all, who's going to jump into the, the cage with GSP, who just has, who's done everything you just stated, plus an MMA who's been one of the greatest champions in the history of MMA, and he's still a young man. He's going to get in there, and he's going to do everything that he's talking about. Look, let me tell you what. Right now, I GSP is minus 140, and I'm, I'm going to lay heavy on GSP in this fight, boys. I'm going to tell you what. This is a good spot here. GSP, I don't care about the layoff. Bisping is suffering from CTE, I think. I think he's going to get rocked, and I think it's going to be a long night for Bisping. Either he's going to get busted up for five on his back, or GSP gets the TKO, or maybe even a submission. Don't ever count that out. Yeah, I would be really interested. I, I don't see how you can... I, I know we're still about two weeks away from that fight, but I'm telling you, I don't know how you lay off a GSP. Like, that's a back-the-truck-up moment. Yeah, see, what what you got to do is you, you use these two weeks leading up to that on the plays from, you know, college football, and you build up that bankroll, and then you go heavy on that GSP fight because as long as things keep, you know, trending this way and there's no signs from camp that he's, you know, suffered an injury or any leaks or anything like that, you know, then I think this is going to be a great spot to really open up and have one of our bigger uh, our bigger plays here on the show so far. So let's have a quick talk about uh, young Conor McGregor, who apparently wants a lot of money, and now he's forced to fight interim champions. He's not going to get a big money fight with Nate Diaz. I think Dana's in a tough spot, and I don't think he can offer enough money to get Conor interested, and I think he's on the verge of having Conor drop both of his belts right in his face. Yeah, I think it's all posturing. I think that the guys from the uh, organization, remember, they have big, big bucks now. I think that they'll all get together and they real- they'll realize what Connor's worth. And I think one of the major sticking points will be with the uh, the media sessions. I think if they give him a lightened load, and I mean, I think he's done it. He did enough work during that Floyd uh, press tour bonanza to build the brand where you could you know cut him some slack on these uh on these media tours and if tony ferguson wants to feel slighted and disrespected by that hey use that as your bullet build bulletin board material so when you step into the octagon you're ready to go with the champ i'm really looking forward i want that fight i know it's not a big money fight but it's a fighter's fight and i think that it's gonna as it gets closer i think you'll see that the numbers are still going to be ridiculous i think that it'll be well worth it for the ufc to put that fight on and i think that the fight another fight that's very interesting that's going to be on december 30th is going to be uh Kabi- uh, Habib Nurma- Nurmagomedov versus um, nice. Edson Barboza. Edson Barboza and Habib on New Year's Eve as well. And the winner of that should get the winner of the Ferguson-McGregor fight if McGregor chooses to stay at 155 and 
continue to defend the belt. Very but nice. I think that he, I think he's going to want to be on that New Year's Eve card. You know, he, we all know he has an ego. He wants to be the guy. So that card, the New Year's Eve card, traditionally in MMA, going all the way back to the Pride days, is the most, you know, the most prestigious, right. most important card. It's now so, the New Year's Eve card, and now it's the summer card. He now pulls it off twice a year. So, and yeah. the Super Bowl card he likes to throw in there now, too. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just because I want to throw it in there, UFC star Juliana Pena is pregnant, and I'm not the father. Yep, so, me either. I'm out. All right, we're just throwing that out there. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that made it as a news story. Hey, <laughs> one of our female stars had sex and got pregnant. God, God bless MMA Weekly. Uh <laughs> Phil Brooks is looking for another fight again. Yes, you heard it here. CM Punk is looking to get his ass kicked again. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? He's got to head out to Enzo. Okay, I'm just going to say it right now. I I know where he's training, and the place that he's training is actually very reputable. Very reputable. He needs to go somewhere like the Donner Death Squad. I. (laughs) He needs to run the gauntlet. He needs to get pounded every single day. He needs to realize that he is not the alpha in the room. He is not the alpha in the sport. And let's be honest, he's not – the only reason he's even on the UFC roster at this point is for name power alone. But that's not to say that I'm not interested in watching him throw down. You know what? At the end of the day, like I say all the time about MMA and boxing, even though some people don't want to like to admit it, it's, it's, it's entertainment. You know, yeah. the casual fan, the casual fans, the one that's bringing in the money, not us lunatics who, you know, have spent countless hours on our couch locked up watching these fights going crazy. Like, you know, like our opinion actually really matters at the end of the day. What's you know, he, so, what weight is he fighting at? Is he middleweight? Uh, I want to say really, I want to say he's fighting either at 170 or 185. Like he's cut all the weight off of him. Yeah, I'm not really sure if he's at 185. Here's what I say for a one fight deal. Dana, I'm just throwing it out there. Go get Jake Shields. Jake Shields, yeah, you know CM what? Punk. That's a great fight. You know, if it hits the ground, CM Punk will be in huge trouble, for sure. Not even a... <laughs> yeah, he's a Donner Death Squad guy now. Yeah, yeah he's, in, he's in big trouble. I mean, Jake <laughs> Shields, once he gets to the ground, Shields is no joke. So maybe maybe find him like a... Uh, I don't even know at this point. There's I, I'd have nobody to who stands point. up anymore. Everybody's you on know, the ground. Maybe I'm, one of these maybe one of these guys that was just on the, the latest season of The Ultimate Fighter that, you know, made it to like the semifinals or something. Give that kid a shot, make give him a payday, one of the better kids on the show. Throw him in against CM Punk, let CM Punk, you know, maybe do like a uh, the first prelim fight on the UFC prelim card or something. I, I don't know. I I'm trying to you know There's nothing. There's really nothing. you know, when I rack, rack my brain I just can't come up with a fight that really interests me with him. Uh Mark Hunt. Should we even discuss Mark Hunt's self-destruction? Man, I feel bad for Mark Hunt, and I truly believe I, I was joking around about this being obviously hyperbole and all. But I, Mark, Mark Hunt's Mark, even crazier. Like his tweets yeah. are crazy. He's completely melting down. He's been removed from his fight uh, and replaced by Fabrizio Verdum. I mean, he's yeah. he's a hot, sweaty mess. It's, he, he says he has CTE. I mean, he says his brain isn't functioning correctly. And as the UFC, if somebody says that, you can't consciously put them in the ring. I mean, you know, these guys have to, you know, at the end of the day, these are human beings, not robots that are pumped out for our joy. As much as we'd like it to be Roman-style gladiatorial games, it's not what it is. These guys have families they have to go back to. And, you know, life's to live after the, after all said and done when they're done dancing for our shekels. So I, I think that it's a prudent move on UFC's part. And I understand where Mark Hunt is coming from as well, too, because, you know, he's a, he's a warrior. You know, his, his whole culture is based around combat. So I understand, but he should just, you know, take a back seat, maybe open a gym, become a trainer. I mean, who will want to learn how to strike from Mark Hunt? Yeah, no doubt about it. And since we didn't talk about it last week, we officially have a brand new GOAT within the UFC. Now, by the way, that's the kiss of death. If Dana White declares you the GOAT, you are officially about to lose. Dana yeah, White officially sure. declares Demetrius Johnson the GOAT. Yep, it's like being on the cover of Madden. Right? Get ready for an injury. All he needs to do is put his picture on. I mean, that was the beginning of the end of everybody he's done it to. Yep. See, I think with Demetrius Johnson, I think it's at the point now where he has zero left to prove at this weight class. If he wants to truly be considered the greatest of all time, I think he's going to have to go up to 135, those dangerous waters where he got knocked. Remember, he got knocked out of that division because he couldn't hang with Dominic Cruz. So. 
he's going to be if he bounces back up to 135 and he trounces everybody now and which he might be able to do look this guy like we've talked about a million times he's so talented he is built for mma but when you get a, a guy that's almost as talented as you but bigger and he has all the same skill sets and they're they're almost as sharp as yours you know, it, it, that's kind of a, a tough nut to crack at a, at a heavier weight, and that's why I give Conor McGregor a lot of credit for what he's done at the, the heavier weights. I think it's you know people that don't fight don't realize how much of a uh, how much that 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 matters. Yep, completely agree. And for those of you who actually care, John Jones is still looking for an out or a reason why Trinable wound up in his system magically. Oh boy, John Jones, you know. It's, I feel like putting, you know, three fingers in the air like Sonny from Bronx Tale and talking about wasted talent. The poor guy. I mean, you know, what are you? What's wrong with you, dude? Get your get your act together. Get a handler. Find somebody that you know. Ha- if hand feeds you, if that's if that's what it takes. Get your shit together, bro. You're still a young man. I mean, come on. He's a month away from Bellator. He's I mean, not even Bellator. He's a month away from like, you know Legacy Fighting Alliance. <laughs> what is it? One. Did you did you see that the other night? That for those of you who don't know anything, Japan apparently has its own organization. I don't know if it was one or one of those. They had Frank Shamrock against uh, Sak- Sakuraba. Sakuraba. Nobody even yeah. announced it. Nobody even know. knew about it till the day of the fight. Yeah, they they do that kind of stuff in Japan. It's crazy. Look, the you, you know to to if digress a minute and talk about the old Pride Day since we're on Japan. Everything was yakuza run back then. So there would be all kinds of crazy stuff going on in the locker rooms. You can you know Google some of the uh, older stories about some of the crazy nonsense. Guys not getting paid and just insane stories. And with the new uh, the new organization over there, Ryzen, you know the the one that's uh, based out of Indonesia actually, yep. but they're doing events all throughout Southeast Asia. And I'll tell you, it, it's they have a pretty decent roster but you know at it's still if you want to be considered the guy you got to go to ufc and you have to navigate those waters if you want to be the guy and then after you navigate those waters if you want to cash in on a big payday and ride off into the sunset you know over in southeast asia hey look man i don't blame you you're closer to mount everest you're closer to you know bali and uh make some room for your boy little rob if that's the case there you go there's your mma update don't say that we didn't give it to you and we actually gave you one joke we are both sure that we are not the father of paying his child I don't think anybody cares about Mackenzie Dern yet. I'll talk about it after she actually signs and gets her next fight, but I'm very excited about Mackenzie Dern actually getting into the UFC at some point. That's a oh, very, that's a very for those of you who don't know, Mackenzie Dern is arguably, she is the one. She is the female, I don't even know, she's the hoist gracie of women in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and she's on her fourth fight, still trying to get yep. into the UFC, and what we've discovered is she doesn't like to get hit. So she, you know, she's got to work that shit out. <laughs> she does. You know, that's the pro- that's a problem with a lot of grapplers. So one thing I'm really interested to see is seeing is how Kayla Harrison transitions when she yep. makes the jump. Because let me tell you what, her judo game is in- insanely good. You know, I have a really good buddy of mine, uh, Richie, who is a really a judo maniac. And uh, he used to work for me in the sports book, and we'd sit around uh, late at night on like a Tuesday night when there was nothing going on in the you know middle of the summer. And he'd show me all these crazy judo videos of all these practitioners, and he would, you know, I'll tell you, man, her judo was on another level. She is, she's gonna be, she's gonna be a problem in MMA. And I'll, I'll tell you what, Cyborg better hope she retires before it's time to face Kayla Harrison. If if Harrison goes up to 145, where I think she's gonna be, because this chick is a killer. Her judo is insane. You do not want to be. Uh, you don't want to be caught up in the clinch with her, and uh, man, I'll tell you, her and Dern, those are those are two two women that literally have superstar written all over them. And I'll tell you another another gal who has superstar written all over her, and that's Megan Anderson at 145. She doesn't get too much pub out in, in America yet. You know, she was supposed to fight uh, Cyborg, and she got pulled off the card because of some. Uh, you know issues with her uh weight and all that jazz with you know the some of the the stuff she was taking kind of like john jones i'm not too uh sure of the situation i you know i don't know anyone in her camp so i don't know anything you know you know concrete but according to her it was um something that she didn't know she was putting into her body and uh, you know (laughs) right right but neither here nor there she's a tremendous talent and she's long and rangy and she likes to strike so her and cyborg eventually down the road when she gets her stuff worked out is going to be uh it's going to be something to to see and i think that uh um the 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 women with dern and kayla harrison are it's just going to be they got a lot of good stuff coming up in the future i think for women's mma and on the guy side did i see the note correctly i saw it on the bjj times that tonin's thinking about going to mma 
Yeah, he uh, signed actually. I believe it's with Legacy. Don't quote me on legacy that. Legacy or one? Like I feel like he signed with one of them. Oh no, you know what? It's one. Excuse it me. It is one. one. It is one. He signed with one. Yep. That's a great deal. I mean, no, it, again, it is, it for all you super nerds out there who follow MMA, yes, everybody's got to start in the minor league somewhere and.